education. <laughs> Your next step would go to the temporary cell in here. Then they would take you upstairs and see the judge. If the judge gave you 30 days in jail, how do you think you came down the set of stairs? Third band. <laughs> no, that would be police brutality. Oh, I tripped. Yeah, that's right. You're <laughs> very clumsy. That top step up there is this much taller than all the rest. Oh, that's and the tread is this much smaller. So you missed the first step. Mm. We didn't do anything to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just, fell down these steps. That explained all the cuts and bruises from the re-education. There you go. The back, just bad luck. That's it. This was your entrance for 81 years. Wow. If you were tall like me, this was an uninsulated <laughs> oh. steam pipe that you could whack your head on. And right here at the floor line is a nice little two spot yeah. trip hazard Another going trip. in. And I'm sure it was wrapped with asbestos. No, it so, wasn't insulated at all. Oh, it just it was, it's so it was hot. It's open steam pipe. Oh, so it burnt your head too. This was your lady cell. Oh, a woman's cell? Wow. So, ladies. After you. <laughs> this was the lady cell. Okay. And the lady cell was the luxury cell. And it's Drugs don't belong oh. in there. <laughs> there's, there's your man. Right? Oh, there's the man, huh? Okay, this we think was solitary confinement. That is a double door room with a sloped floor and a floor grate. The women's cell had, they only stacked the women too high. The men's cells had a third bunk. The average temperature in this jail was 100 to 105 degrees in here. Those were all steam pipes. Your bathroom facilities over here in the corner. We think those are some of the original beds. We did have a lady that took this tour in 2009. Who seen some graffiti down here because she was here in Butte for a funeral. And she seen some graffiti down here. She says, I gotta go take a picture. I took a picture of that. And I gotta go talk to my aunt Dorothy. She was here in Butte for Bill Buttons' funeral. And she had to go talk to her aunt Dorothy Buttons. Well, she said her last name was Wendell. How about that? <laughs> this was your women's cell. Had nice air mattresses on top, right? No, they got a foam rubber mattress. Men did not. Oh. And your next cell was your nightly drunk tank <laughs> that held fifteen or more in it. Right here. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Fifteen or more in this cell. And probably every drunk that went into that cell probably went into it face first. Mm. Because the police probably weren't nice enough to tell the drunks to watch their step. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I thought we were going to have a <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you about did it. I about did it. Oh, look how small the toilet is. Oh my God. This was your drum tank. Probably a little slippery floor. Huh? Floor probably a little slippery. Yeah. Wow. And look what the pillow, the pillow is steel. A little steel thing here. When's your next tour? <laughs> that is awesome. Tomorrow. This is your women's drum tank. Watch Man. your step. Yeah, watch that. That, that, watch it. <laughs> that don't have no, much give to it at all. No. <laughs> oh, <good>. Man. <laughs> this cell here had bumps for 12. 16 to 18 in. This cell here we need that local bad boy. His family took our tour. His ex-wife said that she had bailed him out of here. Uh -huh. And that's Mr. Robert Evil Knievel. Evil Knievel. He was born and raised here. Dude. He's buried here. Wow. And that's a picture of Mr. Knievel back there. In the, 
And Mr. Knievel from 1956. And how long did he stay in the cell? Well, we think he was in every one of these cells <laughs> at one point or another. Wow. Not just this cell, but every cell. Robert Knievel was arrested in 1956 for reckless driving. Hmm. He was booked in here with another gentleman whose name was Mr. William Knoffel. No. And the story has it that the tailor down here was gathering up prisoners to take upstairs in front of the judge. And he yelled, holler off, Knievel, Knoffel. Walked around the corner, looked in the cell and said, oh my God, Mr. Evil Knievel and Mr. Awful Knoffel, come hmm. with me. <laughs> That's when he got his nickname. That is a 1920s policeman's kit. His little 32 revolver, Billy Club, hollow, lead filled, badge, copper and silver, handcuffs, brass knuckles, and the call mic deal is called a come along. <laughs> you know what the come along is used for? Well, you want me to show you? No. They would jab you right here at the bone to the wrist and squeeze. And if I were to twist and tell you to sit down, what would you do? Sit down. If I told you to come this way, you'd <laughs> come right along, wouldn't you? Yes. Okay, that's why they call it the gum along. Hmm. This came out of our 1971 newspaper. Jude City Jail, no metal roses. Murphy was our chief of police who died of a head injury in 1935. He was known nationwide in 1935 as Gerald Wise. He had so many snitches here in Butte that if he arrested you for a crime, he could tell you what you had for breakfast and who you had breakfast with. Yeah. Women, drunk, men, men, juveniles. Teenage boys got paraded clear down in front of everybody. In the juvenile cell there, that jacket hanging up there in the middle, is a 1920 policeman's uniform jacket. That pair of gloves is a pair of gloves that the police used to be issued that are now illegal for the police to even have. Each one of those gloves weighs 12 to 16 ounces. Mm -hmm. Double line, lead plate, lead shot. Wow. Now, where are the gloves? Oh, I see. Gloves. Where are the gloves? Where are they? Oh. Wow. They slap you with them, punch you with them, or come behind you and box your ears. Oh. Your handcuffs, your leg irons, your ratchet T bar come along. Your 1920s policeman's whistle, your jailhouse coat hanger, newspaper and aluminum foil. <laughs> Below that is your fingerprint kit, what they used to put around your neck for your mug shots, for your date and case. The club is called a sap or a blackjack. That is a spring with a lead weight in the end of it. Mm -hmm. They smack you upside the head with it, it sapped all of your energy. The revolvers are 32 caliber. Those keys are the original three geo keys, and that is an actual 45 caliber, 50 shot clip Thompson machine gun. That is a real deal, that's a Tommy gun. And that red, black, and green case is what used to sit on the street corners. That's how the police communicated before radios. Huh? But, but if you were, if you were a citizen and you needed assistance and you couldn't find your copper, you could usually contact the citizen who usually lived right behind that call box. The copper key would go right here, but the citizen's key would only go right there in the citizen's key. Yeah. It would not open the box, but it would turn on the light to switch for it. Well, like that. But once that citizen turned his key, it would also trigger an arm and it would come down, locking his key in. He could not turn it back off and get his key back until the copper was dispatched down, opened the box, and released his key. Wow. There's your original 1900s to 1920s, or 40s, 911 system. Well, that neat. And right here is where the jail was closed in 1971. In the community shower, 
where a kid named Keith Earl Johnson died. He hung himself. And this is a cell they put prisoners they wanted to show off or public humiliate. If you take it, open that door, and take that steel plate off that window out there, that's exposed directly into the sidewalk area. Wow. This is what they put prisoners they wanted to show off or public humiliate. Ain't that something? There is a name on the wall in there. It's a gentleman still alive that we have talked to. He goes, I was in that cell in 1970 for five days. I've written my stories down. They're in my safety deposit box. And that's where they're going to stay at. Until either I'm dead or the last of the five of the Sullivan Gang are dead. <laughs> Sullivan Gang was the second name of the 1971 Butte Police Department. Gerald Sullivan was our chief of police who committed suicide. He shot himself in the back of the head. Well, that's... Okay. Mickey Difficult. Sullivan died of a hunting accident. Shotgun blast in the stomach. Found a big boomer, a ball player, fence out by rocker. Shotgun leaning up against the fence, two poles down. You know, today, Butte had two gentlemen that came through Butte that both became famous. But neither of them became famous from here. The one gentleman was a police officer who left Butte because Butte was too rough. And he became famous after he was murdered in Tombstone, Arizona. Uh, or not, or Tombstone, it was... Batman. Yeah. Huh? Batman. No. Morgan, or... Morgan. Morgan was killed in Tombstone. And when another very famous gentleman came through Butte, that nine months of his life were missing. And two years ago, we found eight of it. All the record, all the court records, everything was showing that eight months of his life or nine months of his life was missing. They couldn't find it. We found eight of it. He was supposedly so sick he couldn't make his court appearance, so they kept putting it off. Then all of a sudden, he was gone. He made it to the train depot. That was Doc Holliday. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we know he was here. <laughs> we, found, we found Morgan's designation letter saying the butte was too rough. <laughs> and we know Doc Holliday was here. And uh, yeah, this is stuff we've been finding over the last 10 years working on this stuff. And you didn't want to be in there, you definitely didn't want to be back here. This was your interrogation cell. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Who is it? Interrogation. Oh, is that where they get the hair done? That's for? Oh, that's going to look like an electric, oh, early electric chair. What they would do is they would strap you in a chair in here for six to eight hours in total darkness. Then they would come back in and shine a light in your eye and question you. So I wonder how many false confessions came out of this room. Mm -hmm. In this room, we found a chunk of chain, a pocket knife, a set of brass knuckles. Wow. And that poster was here. Support to local place be a snitch. Mm -hmm. Is that a hair dryer? That's just an old hair dryer. Right? <laughs> I mean, you gotta have fun with this. Oh, wow. Keith Earl Johnson, a kid named nine, a kid that was 19 years old, died in that community shower right out there. He, helped, he hung himself. Two days after he died was the last day there was ever a prisoner in this jail. Mm. That's when the federal government stepped in and closed this jail, classifying it as a dungeon. And what year was that? 1971. Now, when was this first built? 1890. 1890. Wow. 81 years this was in full use. Man, oh man. Yeah. So we had enough? Should we head to Beauty Legal but Fun Side? Yeah, we're going to head out. We're going to go to a Roaring Twenties Prohibition speakeasy. I'm so sorry. You're ready. You got to get her down on that.